Hey guys, Gravender here. What's going on? Welcome back to another episode of Marvel Contest of Champions. And we've got the final addition to our December and January champions brought to us by MCOC Trucos once again. Guys, like I said yesterday, completely on top of it. I figured he'd be putting this one out today. It seems like he's just been doing them one day after the next. Probably just so he's got content to put up. And that's cool by me because that gives me content to put up every single day by going over this stuff. So, Cable is the next champion on the list. We've got Hyperion coming up tomorrow. We've got Howard the Duck coming up later on. And then during January, we're going to have Gwenpool and Cable. So I was a little bit hesitant to say whether or not Cable was going to be a tech or a mutant character because you can really lean both ways considering the fact he's got a lot of prosthetic uh, technical stuff, techie stuff going on with his body. He could potentially be a tech character and he, you know, he's a mutant, so he could potentially be a mutant as well. So let's jump right into the, uh, the actual bio that we got here and it's going to give us a little bit more information on what's going on here. Nathan Summers was a child of destiny even before his birth. His parents, Scott Summers and Madeline Pryor, were manipulated into having him by Mr. Sinister in an attempt to create a genetically superior mutant as his ultimate weapon. As an infant, he was instead infected with the deadly techno-organic virus and sent 2,000 years into the future to save his life. Years later, he would return, taking the name Cable to represent his unique place as a link between the present and the future. Now, what I really like about this, and is really awesome, is the fact that we have acknowledgement of Mr. Sinister by Contest of Champions, by Kabam. So there's the possibility there now that we could potentially get Mr. Sinister in the game. And I think that is absolutely exciting to me. If nothing else comes out of all this, the fact that even he is mentioned by name in here is pretty friggin' awesome to me. But we do get him called a mutant in this. So I'm hoping that they're going to go with the mutant for him. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. We do need more tech characters in the game. And Cable could definitely fit that bill as a tech character. But we'll see what happens. I think it would be more true to his roots if they did go with the mutant uh, aspect of it. Signature ability. Techno-organic virus suppression. Cable's immense mutant power are hampered by having to constantly keep the techno-organic virus in check. As the strength of the virus wanes, Cable has a percent chance gain percent power over 10 seconds each time he feels a bar of power again says mutant in there as well so I'm, I'm guessing they're leaning more towards the heavy mutant side of, aspe of the aspect with this character so I'm hoping like I said he will be a mutant but like I said we do need tech characters too um, I'm not really sure what to think about the signature ability I guess we'll just pretty much have to wait and see uh, what exactly it pertains to I know that uh, getting to take a look at Hyperion's actual abilities today is a little bit different than what we got with uh, these leaked images. So, Abilities. Future poison durations are reduced by percent each time a poison is triggered on cable. So he does, he has poison reduction. He doesn't have a poison immunity anytime he is poisoned. Like, if you go up against a character like Abomination is going to poison more and more and more, it's going to lose the potency over time. So it doesn't take as long to deal out the poison. He's going to get rid of it faster. So he's a poison-resistant champion, not poison-immune. Once his poison durations are reduced to zero, Cable gains a passive percent bonus to special attack damage. Okay, but like I said, how many how many characters in the game are you actually going to go up against that are going to put that many poisons off on you, aside from Abomination, you know? When calls to bleed, Cable has a percent chance to trigger his heavy attack, G-Gen, on his opponent. Again, this is something that's it's kind of new, so we'll have to see exactly what it what it does. Uh, percent chance to regen percent health for X seconds each time a power threshold is reached. This ability stops working below 25% health. So this is kind of uh, in the vein of magic, where every time magic reaches a power threshold, if she once she brings 
hits her L1, she has the possibility to go into limbo. This is kind of what it's sounding like with Cable here is whenever he hits, you know, the wall for the L1, he has the potential to regen, which is really kind of cool. I mean, it's, it's kind of like limbo, but he's not going to be getting his health, or he's going to be getting his health, but he's not going to be getting, you know, um it all back from being hit on he's going to be you know gaining a little bit of health from it so that's kind of that's kind of neat to me percent chance to degen organic opponents up to percent of your attack over x seconds strength of degen scales inverse of your opponent's current power again it's it's all going to be stuff really that we're going to have to actually take a look at once it's in the game to be able to tell what any of this stuff does. I mean, it's all kind of worded a little bit funny, so I just will just have to play around with him when he comes out and see what he does. Special attacks, short control burst is his L1. Cable knocks back his opponents, making space to use his plasma rifle. This attack is unblockable if you are currently under the effects of a true strike buff. Okay. Charge slot. A telekinetic wave followed up by high energy charged blast from his rifle. And see, this is this is the part right here where we're going. We got charged shot. They're actually using his mutant abilities here with the te the telekinetic wave because he does have telekinetic powers. So I'm guessing they are definitely going to make this guy a mutant. Uh, TK rifle is his L3. Cable uses his power to enhance. He uses his powers to enhance his plasma rifle, locks on his target, and unleashes a withering barrage of firepower. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. He sounds like he's going to be a lot, a lot of skill uh, components to the character as opposed to the mutant aspect side of it. I mean, we're getting a little bit of the mutant side in here, but not as not exactly a lot. If you've seen Hyperion's L2 at this point in time. His uh, L2 here kind of sounds similar to how that works with how he, you know, you get that that breath, and then he comes in for the punch. So we're going to get the telekinetic wave, followed up by a rifle shot. So I mean, Cable's going to be cool. I think he's going to be cool. I don't just from on paper looking at this, I don't think he's the coolest of all the ones that have came out so far. I think I've been a lot more impressed with uh, what I've read from Howard and what I've read from Hyperion and what I've read from Spot or from Gwynpool. So I don't know. I don't know yet. We'll just have to wait and see. I think there's a lot of new stuff in here that, that a lot of us haven't seen before, so maybe maybe that'll play a bigger aspect in the role of the whole scheme of it. But alright guys, that's gonna be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, please consider leaving a sub on it. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next episode. Later.